everyone, welcome to episode three of the uh, the RC Flight School. We have Logan here, uh, myself, uh, Brian, the uh, the host, and today we're going to talk about some of the the parts of a remote control airplane. Now, if you remember the previous episodes, we talked about uh, pieces of the parts of an airplane that are the exact same if it's a full scale or an RC plane: wings, fuselage, uh, ailerons, rudder, elevator, all that stuff. Exactly the same full scale plane. Exactly the same. RC plane. Now we're getting into what makes an RC plane a little differently. Now, so we talked about before, this Habu here has a has a guy in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He's not going to fly this thing. So in order to fly the airplane, there's a number of things that have been done to an RC plane so that you can fly it from the ground. And part of that is the remote control system. Now, in episode two, we talked about the transmitter. The transmitter is what Logan's going to be hanging on to, and he's going to be moving his sticks, and he's going to fly the airplane. The transmitter sends out a radio signal, and the radio signal goes to what we call a receiver. And the receiver is a small little box that sits inside the aircraft. This is an example of an old uh, Spectrum AR636A. Uh, it's just an older model I have laying around. And this with the antennas, see the, this, this is the antenna that's sticking out, right? This is what receives, hence the name receiver, the transmission from the transmitter, the controller that you're holding it onto. This is what takes that radio transmission and converts what you're doing with the control stick to making the airplane do that, okay? Now, when we, we have a system we call binding an airplane, right? And when we call binding an airplane, what we're doing is we are binding the transmitter to the receiver. And there's a unique code that is transmitted through the radio frequency that links the transmitter and the receiver together. Mm -hmm. Now they're bound. They are talking to each other so you don't get confused. So you could have 10 airplanes in the air, 10 different radios, and each one, each airplane and each transmitter has its own frequency it's operating on. Kind of like a garage door opener. You know, you know, when you hit your garage door opener, not everybody's garage door in the neighborhood goes open. Mm -hmm. Okay, similar type thing. Inside this receiver, which is mounted typically somewhere in the, uh, the fuselage of the aircraft on the Habu, it's located about here, um, but it's, it has these little pins on the back of it, okay? Mm -hmm. And these pins here is what actually plugs into what we call um, the servo. Now these servos, this here's a, a old Spectrum servo that's out of another airplane. There's little gears inside here and a little circuit board. And these plug into the, um, these plug right into the, uh, the receiver here, okay? Mm -hmm. So they plug in and when you move the control stick on the transmitter, the receiver interprets that movement, transfers that signal through the wires to the circuit board in the servo, and it moves what we call the control horn, okay? It moves, it swings. This is a radial um, micro server or mm -hmm. servo. There's linear servos like my little P51 that made all that noise. That, yeah. that, those are what they call linear servos. This is like a rotary servo, micro servo. And this arm moves back and forth. And as it moves that arm back and forth, it pushes on a control rod and the control rod pushes on the control surface and that's what makes things happen. So um, when you move the stick on the controller, the receiver receives it, sends that signal to the servo, the servo moves, the servo moves the control arm and now the airplane is doing whatever you told it to do, okay? So another part, part of the, the equation here that plugs into the receiver is the electronic speed controller. And if you remember, we put this Habu together, right? We worked mm -hmm. on it together. Inside the fuselage here on the EDF, it's located back here on a prop plane. It's usually up by the nose. There was this uh, kind of this rectangular block, right? And that rectangular block that was inside the fuselage here is the electronic speed controller. Mm -hmm. And really what that's doing is it's taking the power from the battery and it's distributing that, that power to the motor and to the receiver. And it does that through the, the throttle channel. And remember before, channels are what you can, you know, basically what you can do. Mm -hmm. So if you have a six channel um, receiver, you can operate six things, throttle, Four, you know, three control surfaces, mm -hmm. the ailerons, elevator, rudder, 
you got extras. You can do retractable landing gear. You can do flaps. A four channel is pretty much the, the base of what you need to fly an airplane. And these go up in, in channel count from there. The more channels, the more things you can do. For a beginner, you need basically four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so you don't need you don't need a lot to uh, to get started, which is great. You just need to fly the airplane. Also housed inside this receiver, uh, and this this one here has AS3X. And AS3X, the same as it is on this Habu, um, it's I tell you what, I've been flying airplanes for like eight years now, and I I think almost ninety percent of them have had AS3X. To me, it is an absolute game changer because AS3X is a gyro that's inside this receiver. And what it does is it takes the airplane and it counteracts things like turbulence, mm -hmm. wind, um, things that will make the airplane kind of bounce around in the air. It automatically senses that and it moves the control surfaces to kind of control the airplane a little bit more. You are still flying the airplane. And I, I wanna bring this up because so many people online have a misconception that if you have a gyro in your airplane, you are not flying the airplane, the computer's flying it. No, that's not true. AS3X is like shock absorbers on your car. You got shock absorbers on your car, you're still driving the car. Shock absorbers in your car smooth out all the bumps and dips and, and things in the road. It makes you makes the car ride smoother. Mm -hmm. AS3X in an airplane is like shock absorbers for your car. If you got a lot of wind and turbulence and the airplane's bouncing all over the place, what happens is, is the gyros pick up that motion and move the control surfaces on their own to kind of smooth the airplane out. If you remember my little P-51 in the, uh, the last episode, when we were moving around and it was chittering, chattering and making all that racket, that's AS3X working on that plane. It says, oh, I'm, I'm banking this way. Oh, I'm banking that way. It will automatically move things accordingly. Mm -hmm. You are still flying the plane. You are pilot in command. You are in control of the plane. AS3X is not autopilot. It's not a computer flying the plane. It's shock absorbers for your airplane. Think of them that way, okay? All right, so it smooths out, and it really it helps make small planes fly like big mm -hmm. planes. Um, you can fly a little bit more wind with AS3X because the wind is it acts on the airplane. The gyro is kind of control, you know, keeping mm -hmm. that in check. So you can fly with more wind with AS3X, but once again, don't fly if you're not comfortable, okay? Uh, the other thing that like this Habu has is safe. Now safe is something that um, Horizon Hobby and Spectrum have developed for their aircraft. And safe is another one of those terms that I think is grossly misunderstood. This aircraft has safe. When Logan is flying it, Logan is flying the airplane. Safe is not autopilot. Safe is not um, the computer flying the airplane for him. He is flying the airplane SAFE stands for <clears throat> Sensor Assisted Flight Envelope, okay? Yeah. And for this, I'm actually gonna demonstrate with my P-51 because it's a little bit smaller, so I'll be right back. Now, this P-51 here does not have SAFE installed on it, but we're just gonna use it for demonstration purposes. The Habu does have SAFE, and this is what, as a beginner pilot, is gonna make and break your success. I'll tell you what, I learned on SAFE, it was an absolute lifesaver for me to get control of the airplane and learn how to fly it. Um, it gives you a lot of confidence. It helps keep the airplane in the air to give you the ability to build the confidence to get used to it. Safe is awesome. There are three modes to safe. The big one we're going to start with today is beginner. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Logan being a new pilot is going to put the aircraft in beginner mode and safe using the transmitter. We've got a three position switch, right? Put it in beginner mode. When it goes into beginner mode, what it's going to do is, as he moves the airplane, it's gonna limit the amount of bank, okay? So maybe it only banks this far. And maybe it only pitches up, pitches down about this far, mm -hmm. right? What it's doing is it's creating what we call a flight envelope. It's limiting the amount of motion in the airplane. Mm -hmm. As you're beginning to learn to fly, the last thing you wanna do is flip the airplane over, put it into a dive, and end up in the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Safe limits the amount of movement you have in the airplane. And as you get started, you're not going to have the sensitivity to how much to move the stick back and forth, right? I've been flying for like eight years. Even I still struggle a little bit with that sensitivity in the beginning of the flying season. You haven't developed the muscle memory 
to know how much do I move that stick to get how much bank angle just takes practice, right? Mm -hmm. As you learn, you're going to probably push the stick all the way over to one direction, right? Well, if you push it all the way over to the right and without safe, the airplane would just start to roll and go out of control, right? Mm -hmm. Safe says, oh no, I got you there, Logan. I'm gonna only bank the airplane this much, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you still get to fly the airplane. You're learning how to fly the airplane, but it's gonna say, I'm gonna hold the airplane in this bank angle, even though you got that stick all the way over, right? Mm -hmm. Same with pitch. I pull back on that stick without safe, I can do a loop. With safe, it says, no, 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 Logan, I got you. I'm only gonna let you pitch up about this far, right? Because I know you might not have the ability today to do a loop, to roll upside down, so I'm gonna I'm gonna limit. So safe in beginner mode limits the amount the airplane can move around in the air, and it helps you build the ability to get confident and fly the airplane. Okay. It also has a really cool feature um, called the panic button. Mm -hmm. I have yeah I have never used the panic button. I learned how to fly, never had to use it. I'm also a very conservative pilot. But let's do say you get this thing so far out of whack that you don't know how in the world you're ever gonna get it back. Or, which is more common, you're flying on a cloudy day and that airplane's flying out there, right? And you can't figure out, am I flying this way? Am I flying that way? Am I flying this way? This way? I don't know, I lost orientation. As an RC pilot, orientation is a huge problem. I'm standing on the ground watching an airplane flying around, right? I have to know which way the airplane is pointing and what the airplane is doing at all times. If I'm a pilot sitting in the airplane, I can look at my gauges, I can look out the window. I know what the airplane's doing. Also, I'm in the airplane. The fluid in my ear is telling my brain what's happening. That can still cause problems, of course, but we'll keep it simple today. When you are on the ground, it's easy to lose orientation of the airplane. Hit that panic button, the airplane instantly comes back to level flying position, okay? So let's say you get that thing out there and you can't tell, I don't know, am I banking right, am I banking left, pitching up, pitching down? The airplane can turn into a silhouette very easily. Hit that panic button, boom, straight back and level again. Safe mm -hmm. is fantastic. Now let's say you start to get a little bit better. You get a little bit more confident. You want to take this habu and you really want to start flying it more. You want to kick that thing out more of an angle, you want to pitch that thing out more, you want more control of the aircraft. You want to do more. Safe has three modes, beginner, intermediate, and experience. So let's say beginner mode is this, right? I can only bank like this. Intermediate mode says, all right, Logan, you're getting better. How about you bank more like this angle? How about you pitch up more like this and pitch down more like this? You can grow with safe by moving the switch from beginner to intermediate. You get this, you still get protection. Mm -hmm. Can't roll it upside down yet. I can't do a loop, I can't do a roll. I still got my panic button, but I'll tell you what, you got a lot more control of that airplane. You can, you can turn much tighter, you can descend faster, it, you can climb faster, you can bank more. That's intermediate. Expert mode or experience mode, the final mode of safe. When you select that button, Safe says, I'm gonna go take a break. Logan, you got the plane, buddy. You can roll, you can do loops, you can do anything you want. Safe says, I'm gonna take a back seat. If you need it, you flip that switch, boom, I can get you right back. I can put you back in beginner mode, intermediate mode, I can get you the panic switch. I can do that for you. But if you wanna roll that habu upside down, you wanna fly inverted, you wanna do an aileron roll, you wanna do some cool aerobatics, Go to experience mode, SAFE will let you do that. So it's important to know that SAFE is not autopilot. It's really to help teach you to fly. It's gonna give you the confidence. And what's great, the Habu has it. We moved to Real Flight 9.5, which has the Habu in it. SAFE is installed. Mm -hmm. We can actually have you fly with SAFE in beginner, intermediate, and experience mode in the flight sim before you ever take flight in this actual airplane. And as you get better, you'll be able to flip that switch. And some guys learn fast. Some guys go from beginner to experience in five flights. Some guys like me, I made myself fly 25 flights in beginner intermediate mode before going to experience mode. That's probably why it took me so long to fly. I have a feeling with an instructor, with simulator work, and with the ground school, you'll be able to fly this thing 
you'll be able to do aileron rolls in this thing way sooner than I ever was when I was learning to fly. So, all right. Well, we covered a few things here. So um, I'm going to just, um, not only that's really about, about it. Oh, motors. I did want to talk about motors. I'm sorry about that. I was going to talk about it when we talked about the flight mm -hmm. pieces, right? We talked about servos. We talked about the ESC and stuff like that. So let's talk about motors. So um, this is what we consider an EDF unit, mm -hmm. electric ducted fan. It's a little jet looking engine, little turbine looking thing back here. It's a miniature brushless motor, spins at super high RPMs with a fan blade attached to it. And that sucks that air right through like a, like a jet. It's not an actual jet engine, but it's an electric ducted fan. My little P51 here has a brushless motor in it, okay? Now, a lot of my old RC cars and even some of my first RC airplanes had a brushed motor in it. Very inefficient, um, noisy, didn't spin at that high of an RPM. Uh, it was an old school technology. I mean, back to like when I was your age, that was, the, that was it, that's the way it had. New technology allows for brushless motors. They are more compact. They produce way more power. This is a brushless motor. This is, has an EDF unit in it. Almost everything built today has a brushless motor. Now, you forgot your Sport Cub at home today. And the Sport Cub was supposed to be the example of a brushed motor. The Sport Cub 1S has a brushed motor in it. It will wear out over time. But I'll tell you what, you can probably get 80 to 100 flights on that thing before it wears out. A brushless motor, uh, I have one that's beginning to wear out and it's only because the bearings have gone bad in it. And I can't even count how many flights are on that guy. Um, they almost really never go bad. Mm -hmm. So I did want to touch on motors for a little bit. But uh, Logan, do you have any questions on what we talked about in episode three? of the flight school so far? I don't think I do. Okay. All right, so we'll do a little quick review here, uh, just to make sure you keep up on your toes. Uh, AS3X, we'll start with AS3X. Um, first of all, it's always on, by mm -hmm. the way. Safe, you can turn on and off. AS3X is always on. What is safe similar to? S safe is kind of, well, for me, actually, it reminded me of kind of traction control and stability control yeah. in like a modern car. Yep, there you go. Where, That's a good example. Where if you have it on, it's not going to let you drift and do all sorts of crazy stuff. Well, that's actually probably closer to the safe mode is like that. AS3X is closer to shock absorbers. Yeah. It, smooths the... Turbulence. Yeah, so. smooths out the turbulence. You got it. Yeah. And safe is probably exactly... That's actually a great way of putting it there, Logan. Um, it's close to like traction control and stability control mm -hmm. in your car. You can't spin your tires with traction control on, but you can turn it off and go ahead and spin them. And um, safe is what, for t you know, in beginner mode limits your bank angle, your pitch angle, and really helps get you in the confidence to fly the airplane without having to worry about, oh crap, I just flew upside down. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the panic button, if you lose orientation or you lose control of the airplane, hit that panic button, it flattens your back yeah, out again. Snap, snaps it. Yep. So, um, real quick, just as another review, we have, um, what's this little guy called that uh, is plugged into the airplane? A receiver. That's the receiver. You got it. And that receives uh, information from what? The transmitter. The transmitter. And if you want to move those control surfaces, it's connect the receiver is connected to what? These the guys? Servo. Servo. You got it. So, all right. Well, that wraps up uh, episode uh, three of the, uh, the RC Flight School. We're going to move on to uh, the next episode which is uh, types of airplanes and types of uh, completion levels. And then we are going to get into LiPo batteries. We have a whole episode dedicated to just LiPos. So we're going to clear off the bench here, come back at you with a couple different types of airplanes, and we're going to do a, uh, a little bit of an intro on the types of RC planes that are out there.